How do I get to Broadway? I want to get to the center of things. John just passed us, Manhattan transfer. However the city may really be, beneath this thick coating of signs, whatever it may contain or conceal, you'll leave without having discovered it. Idolo Calvino. He was, in appearance, the bourgeois country gentleman, tall, outsized, smelling of cigars, radiating sociability, glass of bourbon in hand. Yet he is known as the most radical voice of America's modernist novelists. From the 20s to the 40s, he was considered the equal or better of his contemporaries, writers like Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. The famed French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre hailed him as the greatest writer of our time. He is now almost entirely unknown, but then again, he isn't easy to know. Why not tell these men stamping in the wind that we stand on quicksand? I read and ponder the course of history and what leverage might pry the owners loose from power and bring back our storybook democracy. His work began as a passionate and creatively inventive attack on American capitalism and its towering figures, yet in his later career he moved to the right and made heroes of free enterprise capitalists. When asked why he had changed, why he had moved from radicalism to conservatism, Dos Passos answered, he had not changed, the world around him had. When he was young, industrial capitalism was the villain. In later years, communism, unions, and big government would all want to enslave us. Though raised in the East, he was born in a hotel room in Chicago, the illegitimate child of a married man and his mistress. His father, John R. Dos Passos, was a successful corporation lawyer born in Philadelphia the son of a Portuguese emigrant. He was married to Mary Hayes, with whom he had already had one son, several years older than John Dos Passos. The father was an authority on trusts and a staunch supporter of the powerful industrial conglomerates that his son would come to oppose in his fictional works in the 1920s and 1930s. In 1910, following the death of his first wife, the elder Dos Passos was able to marry his mistress and John Dos Passos' mother, Lucy Addison Sprigg Madison from Petersburg, Virginia. The young Dos Passos was brought up somewhat on the side. Although his father provided for his son's schooling, he refused to acknowledge him until two years after his marriage when his son was 16. He received an elite schooling, including an undergraduate degree at Harvard. By 1917, however, both of Dos Passos' parents were dead and he found himself increasingly anxious to live abroad. He had had the sort of education reserved for the sons of the privileged classes, but by the time he sailed for France, he'd become convinced he was a socialist. In the spring of that year, he joined Norton Harger's ambulance unit and became a gentleman volunteer. In France, Dos Passos served as a volunteer with the ambulance unit at Verdun, scenes of some of the bloodiest fighting of the war, and after the entry of America, as an enlisted man with the army medical unit. Three Soldiers, the first of his novels to bring him acclaim and condemnation, was based on his experiences in World War I. To many it was a revelation that the establishment's voice can be heard clearly in Chicago Tribune's review of the novel. It is a textbook and Bible for slackers and cowards. With Manhattan Transfer, Dos Passos shifted his view to America and its greatest city. Manhattan Transfer is a cross-section novel, as defined by George J. Becker kind of mosaic, or better, a revolving stage that presents a multitude of scenes and characters which taken together convey a sense of the life of a given milieu, and by extension the tone of contemporary life generally. The milieu in this case is New York in the period between the first years of the century and the early 1920s. All of the novel's characters are involved in the life of the city, all are affected by it, and it is their place amid the forces of Manhattan, and indeed amid the forces of modern urban America that he examines. One way to understand the way that Manhattan Transfer differs from Sister Carrie is provided by the critic Paula Gee. 
He argues that the Manhattan of Dos Passos is in essence a city of signs, whereas the Manhattan of Dreiser is a city of things. Beginning in the early 1920s, she writes, the architectural spaces of American cities have been awash in texts and images. Advertising, street signs, newspaper headlines, political posters, graffiti, etc. The two formations of the city, the city of things and city of signs, correlate with two different stages of American capitalism. The industrial capitalism of mass-produced consumer goods, capitalism of things, and the emergence of what was to become post-industrial capitalism, a capitalism of signs. Capitalism of signs developed in part as a consequence of the unparalleled success of industrial capitalism's mass production, which spurred the increasingly sophisticated development of marketing devices, as producers sought to generate demand for an unprecedented volume of consumer goods. It was only in the early 20th century that advertising and marketing became major urban industries. The city of things gave way to the city of signs, and the emphasis of the actual economies of major cities largely shifted from a production of goods to the production of signs, including advertising. Both in content and technique, Manhattan transfer mimics this transformation. It privileges speed, fragmentation, image. The novel registers, as we shall see, the changed nature of humanity in a world where image is everything.